Hello besties, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. My name is Hallie and I'm so happy that you're here. Today we are going to be talking about all the books that I want to read in October or my October TBR. I'm so excited to talk about some of the books that I want to read this month. I'm really excited because there are a couple of books I have my eye on for this month that are new authors. Well, new to me that I've never read before and also a few new releases that I'm so excited about. Speaking of new releases, I want to really quickly thank Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. As we all know, I love Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a monthly subscription service and I genuinely look forward to picking my book pick every single month and then getting to receive this cute little blue package. It's truly like the best way to start off the month. Book of the Month's mission is to bring the best new fiction forward. Every single month, their editorial team reads through hundreds of new and emerging authors and books and then they pick some of the best new books for you to choose from. There are new curated picks every single month and you can skip any month for free. They've already helped me discover so many new authors and books that I probably wouldn't have discovered on my own already. You can see my growing collection of Book of the Month books. I love that they are all the same size hardcover. I just think they look so nice all together. And if you would prefer to listen, they do have audiobooks in addition to the hardcovers. So each month you're able to choose whether you want to do the audiobook or the hardcover for that month. Book of the Month has the best prices for new release hardcover fiction. And this month you can get your first book for only $5 when you use the code PUMPKIN. I will have it on screen here as well as everything linked in my description box down below. I want to really quickly show you my book picks for this month. The first one that I chose is The Dagger and the Flame by Catherine Doyle. This is a YA fantasy romance. And this one says, in the dark underbelly of a beautiful city, two rival gang members are pitted against each other in a deadly game of duty and revenge in which the most dangerous mistake is falling in love. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this one. It sounds so good. The next one that I chose is The Wild Huntress by Emily Lloyd-Jones. This is actually another YA fantasy romance. This one says, every five years, two kingdoms take part in a wild hunt. Joining is a bloody risk and even the best hunters can suffer the most gruesome fates. Still, hundreds gamble their lives to participate, all vying for the hunt's life-changing prize, a magical wish granted by the other king. I love fantasy books that have some type of trial or game incorporated into it. I'm so excited to read both of my October book picks. I feel like they are so perfect going into the fall time and especially like the October spooky season. Again, make sure to visit bookofthemonth.com to join and get your first book for only five dollars when you use the code pumpkin. I highly, highly recommend you check Book of the Month out. I love them so much and a huge thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Now, without further ado, let's get into the rest of my October TBR. So, the first book that I have to talk about is actually Actually, another new release, The Wingman by Stephanie Archer. Can you believe I have this in my hands? Because I can't. If you don't know what this series is, this is the Vancouver Storm series. It is a hockey romance series and I'm so the first two books in this series are Behind the Net and The Fake Out. In those books, you follow two different hockey players on the Vancouver Storm team, and I don't know what it is about them, but they're both five stars. I don't know what Stephanie Archer put in this series, but it's like crack for me. And the second that I start these books, I already have butterflies and a five-star feeling. I swear, within like the first four chapters of both of those books, I was like, he, 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 it's a five-star. Like, I just had that feeling the whole time. And I'm not even kidding, when I picked this book up, because yes, I did actually actually started on my Kindle the day it was released because I couldn't help myself. And I swear, I'm not even being dramatic. Within the first like five chapters of this book, I was like giggling in bed in the middle of the night. And I looked at Marky and I was like, I fear this is gonna be another five star. I don't know what it is about this series because I did go back and read on Stephanie Archer's backlist. I started her Queen's Cove series, which is like a small town romance series. And the first book in that series was okay, but I rated it, I think like a 3.5. Like it was not, I don't know what it is about this series specifically that is just perfection for me. I'm so excited to finish this one. I'm already eating it up to the point where I've actually had to make myself chill out and slow down so I don't finish the entire thing in one setting because I'm gonna be so sad when it's over. And I think she did announce that the next book will be released next year, but like, I just, I don't want to be back in the waiting zone, you know? Like, I just want to enjoy this. And my physical copy actually just got delivered today, so... 
love her. This book follows Hayden and Darcy. Hayden is, of course, a hockey player on the Vancouver Storm team. Darcy has been his best friend for eight years and he has had hidden feelings for her for the last eight years while she dated his teammate. And then they break up and she's staying with him while she kind of gets her new life together. And he's supposed to be teaching her how to date because he doesn't want to watch her practice with anybody else because he's secretly jealous and in love with her. And when I tell you, I have never been interested in like the friends to lovers trope. I feel like I've only ever read like one other book and it was just like okay it wasn't like my favorite and so anytime that I hear that a book is about friends to lovers I'm just like eh, I'm not really too interested I like need enemies to lovers this is my you know that's my thing but if every book that I read that's friends to lovers is like this I want 10 more. Like I want 10,000 more. This is just so good. I love everything about this and I'm having the time of my life. The next two books that I have are Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. I did actually start Throne of Glass last month. I started the audiobook while I was doing some of my book journal, but then I started getting confused because I wasn't paying enough attention because I was like really locked in on my reading journal and I found myself daydreaming about my reading journal instead of listening. So I paused the audiobook because this is a book, especially because it's like the beginning to such a long, and loved series and I loved Akatar so much I want to remember every single detail and like fully pay attention when I'm reading it so I think I'm gonna go back and kind of pinpoint the time that I started daydreaming at and then reread from there but I'm still like in the very beginning I think I only made it like 10 chapters in maybe but if you don't know this is the first book in the Throne of Glass series in this book you're following an assassin named Selena the synopsis for this one says in a land without magic an assassin is summoned to the castle she has no love for the vicious king who rules from his his throne of glass, but she has not come to kill him. She has come to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 murderers, thieves, and warriors in a competition, she will be released from the prison to serve as the king's champion. Her name is Selena Sardothian. The crown prince will provoke her, the captain of the guard will protect her, and a princess from a faraway country will befriend her. But something rotten dwells in the castle, and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying mysteriously one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival. I'm so excited. Well, not start. I'm technically already in it because I started this book, but I feel like once I complete this book, then I'll really be like starting the series. Because for some reason, people say like, oh, the first book sucks. You have to like get past it to get into the whole series. Or like some people say you have to like read the first four books to really be in the series. But like as far as I'm in, like I think I'm only like less than a hundred pages in and this is already so entertaining. The world that it's set up in and like the little glimpse that I have gotten already has been so entertaining. And I felt this way about Akatar too. Like I did not feel like the first book was a struggle to get through at all. I thought it was amazing and then it just kept getting better. So I don't know. But yeah. And then Crown of Midnight is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. So I would love to finish both of these this month and then move on to Assassin's Blade. The next two books that I have are actually again in a series. It is Queen of Nothing and then How the King of Elfheim Came to Hate Stories. So this is the third book in the Cruel Prince trilogy and then this is like a little novella that goes after the trilogy is complete. I am so excited to get to this. I am honestly so caught off guard by how how much I like the Cruel Prince trilogy. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be that surprised because it's super popular, but for some reason I just didn't think that I was going to like it or be able to understand it, but I am absolutely eating it up. The first two books in that series have both been five stars for me because they have just surpassed my expectations, and maybe it's because I went into it not thinking I was gonna like it, and so because I like it so much, I'm like, wow, five stars, you know? But yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself in this series. I would love to finish both of these so I can be done with the Cruel Prince trilogy and then move on to the next duology that goes after this. And I would also love, once I'm done with that, to go back and read some of the series that Holly Black has written before the Cruel Prince trilogy. I just love her writing so much. If you don't know what the Cruel Prince trilogy is about, it's about Jude. She is a human living in the fairy realm and it basically tells her story of trying to be strong in a world where she is like inherently weak. And you just follow her journey living in the land of fairy and it's just so good. And I feel like if you are new to the fantasy genre, this would be a great place for you to start off with because the story stories are so good and so entertaining, but it's YA, so it's nothing too intense. There's not a lot of world building. It's not confusing, and the writing is so easy to follow and understand that you just get through it super quickly. So I am very, very, very excited to finish off the Cruel Prince series. I also am just so excited to read this book specifically because it is illustrated. So there's like so much artwork throughout the book, and I just feel like that is going to be such a fun reading experience to have all of the illustrations 
descriptions and stuff between all the words. So yeah, very excited for that. The next two books on my TBR, I actually don't have a physical copy for, so I'm just gonna mention them here really quick so I don't forget about them because I do that sometimes. The first is Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. I'm so excited to read this because we all know by now that I am like Carissa Broadbent's newest biggest fan. I love her writing so much. If you have not read The Serpent in the Wings of Night and The Ashes in the Starker's King yet, I beg you, please go read them. That entire duology and novella, as we all know, all five stars for me, like love them so much. And so Daughter of No Worlds is the first book in a trilogy that she wrote before The Serpent in the Wings of Night. And I have seen nothing but love for that book. So I'm so excited to read it. I feel like I'm gonna love it because I just love Carissa Broadbent's writing. And from what I've heard about the book, it sounds interesting. I kind of want to go into it blind. So I don't really know too much about it. I just know that it's about a slave who is freed and then has like, I don't know, she has like powers or she's just like super strong. I don't know. The next one that I have is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I actually did order the illustrated version for this. It's just not here in the mail. I'm so excited to have that version because it's just beautiful. Not only the cover and like the edges, but throughout the book, kind of similar to this one. It has like illustrations throughout the book. So I'm so excited to read that one. Let me pull up the synopsis for it real quick. Okay, it says, France, 1714. In a moment of desperation, a young woman makes a bargain to live forever and is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets. Thus begins the extraordinary life of Addie LaRue and a dazzling adventure that will play out across centuries and continents, across history and art, as a young woman learns how far she will go to leave her mark on the world. But everything changes when, after nearly 300 years, Addie stumbles across a young man in a hidden bookstore and he remembers her name. I'm so excited for this one. I, maybe I need to lower my expectation on it, but I think that I'm gonna love it and I'm so excited to read it. And I'm also just so excited to have such a beautiful version of a book because I feel like the synopsis of this book in itself is just like already so beautiful. So I feel like this edition specifically matches the vibe of the story so well. So I'm so excited for that one. Okay, so the next book that I have on my TBR is actually a suggestion from one of you guys. I'll try and find the comment and put it here because thank you so much for the rec. After after I posted my reading vlog where I read Happy Place and was just like in love with it, this person commented that I should read This Is How You Lose the Time War and they said this is exactly how I felt when reading this book and I immediately was like I want to read that and it's so cool because I think they explained this in the comment too. Thank you so much. But it is written by two different authors and each POV is written by a different author so it literally is like they're writing letters back to each other. I don't know. I'm so excited for this one. The synopsis says in the ashes of a dying world, Red finds a letter marked burn before reading. So begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents in a war that stretches through the vast reaches of time and space. Red belongs to the agency, a post-singularity technotopia. Blue belongs to Garden, a single vast consciousness embedded in all organic matter. Their pasts are bloody and their futures are mutually exclusive. They have nothing in common, save that they're the best and they're alone. Now what began as a battlefield boast grows into a dangerous game, one both Red and Blue are determined to win because Winning's what you do in war, isn't it? A tour de force collaboration from two powerhouse writers that spans the whole of time and space. It just sounds so beautiful and I feel like I'm gonna love it. It's really short, it's like a little novella, but I feel like this is gonna be one of those that where it's like, how did you fit so much depth and emotion into so little pages? So, I don't know, I'm so excited to read this one and thank you so much again, Bestie, for this book rec. I'm so excited for this. I love getting book recs from you guys. The next book that I have on my October TBR is The Guest List by Lou Lucy Foley. I'm so excited to be finally getting to this. I feel like this is the perfect time to be reading this. This one says, an exclusive wedding on a remote Irish island. The bride, the plus one, best man, the wedding planner, the bridesmaid. All have a secret, all have a motive, but only one is a murderer. I'm so excited for this. So this is set, obviously, at a wedding on a remote island, but I think a storm rolls in or something, and so they're all kind of trapped at the wedding venue, and people start getting murdered. That's so scary, and I'm so excited to read this and figure out what What's going on? I'm so excited to read this book. It sounds so intriguing and I love the setting for this book, especially because the cover gives you like such a good image to picture. So excited for that one. And then the last book that I have on my TBR is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This is another one that I have had on my TBR for the longest time and I'm so excited to finally be getting to it. First of all, similar to the other one, I just love the cover for this one and I love being able to picture this setting while being inside the book. This one says, after years of avoiding 
inviting one another, Daisy Darker's entire family is assembling for Nana's 80th birthday party in Nana's crumbling gothic house on a tiny tidal island. They're finally back together one last time, and when the tide comes in, they will be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. The family arrives, each of them harboring secrets. Then, at the stroke of midnight as a storm rages, Nana is found dead. An hour later, the next family member follows. Trapped on an island where someone is killing them one by one, the Darkers must reckon with their present mystery as well as their past secrets before the tide goes out and all is revealed. I'm so excited for this one. I feel like both of those thrillers are gonna be like such a good vibe for like getting closer to Halloween. I'm so excited. There we have it. These are all the books that I want to read minus two that I don't have in physical copy. But if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future content from me reading vlogs for all of these books. And also don't forget to visit bookofthemonth.com to join and get your first book for $5. Everything that you need is down below in the description box. Just click that link. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm so excited excited to get into this next month of reading and I hope you're there to join me. But that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!